Um, I really, really don't fit with society very well. Huge, huge problems with that one. But I see a different picture than anybody else does. And I watch these uh, um, Real Housewives, these um, entertainment reality type shows. Not from the perspective of reality, but from the perspective of, can you see how screwed up our world really is? I mean, get into the mindset of the rich and you can see how these people think. It, you know, it's like, get to know the enemy. And where is the enemy found? <laughs> and it is. Anybody that's got a bigger house than you know that this is the mindset that they live with. You know, they really think that they got life real bad. And any hardships economically, you know, somehow we should feel bad. You know, and it's like, you ain't feeling bad enough until you've lost every single thing you own. And your money is not in the hands of uh, somebody else that's even greedier than you, which is what's about to happen to every one of these. And they don't even see that coming. That somebody that's a hell of a lot greedier than these women are grabbing all their money as they lose their, their shit. But they haven't hit rock bottom. And they these would be the, the level of people that if they actually seen what it is that they do, they'd make a major shift right away. But it's like we all worship people like this, and it's consumerism. You worship your consumerism, so you can't even see your own reflection in this. But this is to the extreme, and that's where you need to be aware of, that this is what you're all trying to be successful at, is to live a lifestyle exactly like they have. You know, you'd be no different that if you were able to afford every single thing that you possibly could, that's how you'd live. Look at how insane you're going to be. I'm going to put a link to the show because I think it's really, really relevant. And one of the things at the end, uh, Kelsey Grammer's, um, they have a, a talk about some kind of stone that they get in um, Africa and Tanzania. I was looking up, you know, oh, let's just check out because they're saying there's no conflict there that you can actually go and pick your own stones, you know. Um, and reading some of this, I'll put a link to this thing too. Um, in the recent past, Tanzania, and I'm only reading a very, very short part of the art article. In the recent past, ta Tanzanians have raised concerns on how multinational mining companies plunder the natural resources at the expense of the local people because of the prevalent high rates of this pillaging of the national stock of natural resources, the citizenry have woken with an uproar to question the government's stance on ensuring land security for its people and benefits from their resources. As in Nigeria, oil producing Delta region, so local communities in Tanzania are unable to benefit from the natural resources found on their land and in their seas. Kind of relevant as we change our dollars that the hands are still going into the wrong people. The, you're going to exchange your currency for the new currency, but it's still going to be kept in, in the same hands as, as who owns it. So it's going to be based on your natural resources, but it's going to be these corporations that actually own these natural resources. Let me continue so you can find out surprisingly who the guilty parties are, either in terms of development or compensation. In 2007, not that long ago, President Kink Wheat, Wheat, whatever, how I can't pronounce his name, set up a dominant commission to investigate the accusations of theft of natural resources and gross human rights violations. The report found that the Tanzanian government had been manipulated by the transnationals in such a way as to leave citizens in the merciless hands of the mining companies. The government was found to be complicit to the exploration of its own people. Two of the major mining companies operating in Tanzania are Canadian. Barrick and Tanzania, Tanzanian Royalty Exploration Corporation. Together they control 50% of Tanzanians' gold projects. 
the recent special issue of Pam Bazooka News and uh, African Files exposes some of the murkier aspects of Canadian mining corporations. Though relatively new to mining in Africa, Canada has now become the superpower of mining on the continent with interest in an astounding 35 countries worth um, some $14.7 billion in 2007. The huge Canadian presence in Africa mining concerns is not in itself a problem. The problem lies in the way the mining company is operating, according to author of uh, whatever, Corp Canadian mining firms operating in Africa are involved in levels of abuse worse than those perpetuated by the former colonial empires. In the early 1990s, just after the World Bank inspired provocation wave, Canada firms were profiting from the Mobuta regime in the DRC. Shortly after uh, the rebellion erupted, so it's like I I read the whole article, but Canada is not as peaceful as we think it is. You know, they don't fight the wars; they own the corporations, and these big corporations aren't paying a dime of income tax. And I've showed another reality show where another Canadian, um, oh, what's his name? Um, He's out of BC. He's trying to sell water and a whole pile of shit. He's got a reality show about his business. And uh, he openly admits he doesn't pay any income tax. He's set up down south where he doesn't pay a dime of income tax. And uh, he's buying up all of uh, Canadian landfront property. Most of all of the Muskogee landfront uh, or, or waterfront property is owned by this guy. He doesn't pay a dime in income tax. He's just living off of uh, consumerism. So Kelsey Grammer and his wife say, oh, there's no conflict there, that uh, you could just go and pick out your diamonds and that you have special permission to, to do so and you show off your consumerism. Be aware of the torture that's involved with that diamond that woman is wearing and do you really feel sorry for her when she says, Oh, my problems, I have problems just like you. My problems are just on a bigger scale. Uh-huh, uh-huh. When that girl is homeless and uh, has absolutely no place to live and cannot feed her children, then she should come and talk to me. But until then, you ain't see. You gotta, you gotta tie anybody that's got a big house that has security as the ones that are completely lost. You can't buy their shit. That's all. Don't be mad. Don't be pissed off. Don't riot. Don't steal from them. Don't be, don't turn into how evil they are. Just don't buy their shit and point your fingers. You know, the bling bling, not a thing to do. And if the bling bling is in the bank account, not the thing to do. If the bling bling is, you know, in the house you live, I'd be selling that house and living in a shack. I'd be basically never ever touching anything money could buy right about now other than build somebody else up. We need to funnel the money around and you need to you know earn your living equally. You know, help so set somebody else's way of living up. We we do all need to work. We all need to be productive. We all need to get back to farming or free energy as possible. We got some major shifts coming with these polar shifts as well. We got lots to prepare for. And it's this class of people that, you know, when they're really willing to give up their shit for humanity, you know, this Elf Kelsey Grammer too, her wife is like, she's saying she's so generous. You know, it brings, you know, the only thing that she's here on the planet for is to help everybody else out. Well, prove it. Give out every dime you got and put it into a good idea because we need good ideas right now from the people that can actually afford it. Look at your golf oil. Soon your kids won't have fish or water, air to breathe if you don't start funding some good ideas. Do it for yourself. <laughs> Am I the only one that sees this insanity? Canada, wake up. He's out.